Oh, hi. So you clicked on this video because you want to learn something related to dentistry. Well, you are on the right place. I am Dr. Hina, the voice and soul behind Dr. Teeth. And this is the platform where we make learning interesting and incredibly easy for you. So do leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I will recommend you to join channel membership to watch our premium videos. You can also visit our website for online classes, courses, and CQs. So let's get started. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. Today we are going to learn about the centric relation definition, how it has evolved over the years. Now centric relation is a very important topic in prosthodontics. You must be knowing the importance of recording the correct centric relation. But the definition also here has a lot of controversy and a lot of changes have happened to this definition in the past 100 years. In this video, we are going to see how this definition has evolved or changed from the rearmost position of the condyle to now the anterior superior position of the condyle. So let's get started with this video. And if you like it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and here we go. So Hanau in 1929, he defined the centric relation as the position of the mandible in which the condylar heads are resting upon the menisci of the sockets of the glenoid fossa regardless of the opening of the jaw. So he just said that it is the position of the mandible in which the condylar heads are resting upon the soft tissues in the socket of the fossa, okay, glenoid fossa. Then Thompson in 1946, he stated that some believed that in centric relation, the condyles are in the most retruded position of the fossa, while others said that it is not. Then Granger in 1952, he said that it is the uppermost, rearmost position. Boucher in 1953 said that it is the most posterior relation. Then Stewart in 1955, he gave the rum position, rearmost, uppermost and midmost position. It was quite popular for some time. Then we have the glossary of prosthodontic terms, edition 1, which said that it is the most retruded relation and it is an unstrained position. American Equilibrium Society in 1977, they changed the position from the rearmost and they said that it is the most anterior and uppermost position. Then GPT-3, it stated that it is the most retruded physiologic relation of the mandible and it occurs around the terminal hinge axis. American Equilibrium Society in 1987, exactly 10 years later, they said that centric relation is when the condyle articulates with the thinnest avascular portion of the disc. So they now included the disc in the definition. They said that centric relation is when the condyle articulates with the thinnest avascular portion of the disc in the anterior and most superior position of the dorsal slope of the eminence. Then if we look at the GPT-7, we'll find a lot of definitions. I think there are seven definitions which are given and they said that none of these definitions are incorrect. Now, moving forward with the latest edition, GPT-9, it states that in centric relation, the condyles articulate in the anterosuperior position against the posterior slope of the articular eminence. So, again, they removed the disc from the definition and they just said that the condyles will articulate in the anterosuperior position against the posterior slope of the articular eminence. And in this position, we have a purely rotary movement. I will leave the references to some of the relevant articles in the description below. There are a lot of definitions given. I've just included a few of them. But I hope you got an idea how the definition has evolved over the years and how we still need to come to a definitive conclusion. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Allah Hafiz.